Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate being able to speak to interested and engaged folks. Um, one of the things that is very plain is that the coronavirus crisis has uh, very much disrupted all aspects of American life, and our elections are no different. We've seen uh, elections and primaries needing to be moved. Um, we're in the middle of raging debates in the halls of Congress and in state houses across the country over what uh, changes need to be made in order to make sure that our elections are going to be safe and healthy for people to participate in. And the Brennan Center has studied and looked at this by talking to a number of election administrators and advocates and doing our own research. And we believe that most of the changes that are needed can be broken up into what I'm calling five different buckets of advocacy. Uh, the first one is voter registration. Now, what do I mean by that? Right before an election, we would be seeing people outside on sidewalks in front of stores um, at festivals trying to register people to vote. Um, we also know that most Americans are registered when they go and get a driver's license. And because driver's license offices are shuttered and uh, physical distancing requirements and shelter at home instructions are requiring people to not be gathering into large groups, we have all of these. Uh, eligible Americans who are not registered to vote, who won't be registered to vote unless we figure out how are we going to register them in a time of social distancing when we don't have open public agencies. So that is some advocacy that needs to happen at both the state and the federal level and also gives opportunities for Americans like the folks watching to be able to lend a hand and help their neighbors who may be on the wrong side of the digital divide or may have language or other limitations that um, may make it hard for them to understand um, that you either need to register to vote or how to register to vote. Another bucket is expanding vote by mail access. Uh, certainly, uh, there are going to be people for whom going to a polling place uh, in person is not going to make sense because they're either high risk or of limited mobility. Um, the lines that may be there may be uh, specifically threatening or dangerous for people. And as such, we need to make sure that every eligible American is able to cast a vote by home if they need to be. Um, and it'll be really important to lean on the existing state mechanisms um, that allow for people to vote ab absentee, but to make sure that these mechanisms have been modified so that people can take advantage of them and be able to vote by home if their uh, health or safety requires it. But another bucket is we need to make sure that we maintain uh, adequate polling places. Um, the reality is that uh, every eligible American should be able to cast a, a vote at home if they want to, but there are going to be uh, communities all across the country uh, that just cannot rely on the mail because they currently get really poor mail service. Um, for example, if you live on a Native American reservation, it, it's really likely that the way your tribe understands your address looks different than the way your post office understands your address to be. Or if you live in a really big high rise in the middle of a dense urban area, or you live in a really rural area, you may get bad mail. Um, and as such, we cannot be forcing people to uh, rely on a system that has already failed them when it comes to casting their fundamental right to vote. Also, as states are uh, getting used to an increased uh, amount of people vote by voting by mail, there's going to be some slippage. Every time you change election systems, something glitches, something goes wrong, and polling places are important, what we would call fail-safes. So that if something happened, you mail ballot on time, or you uh, didn't mail it uh, early enough in advance, you do have the option of being able to vote in person. And of course, we cannot forget those members of our community that have visual or physical uh, impediments that require certain technology that right now best um, exist at polling places so that they can cast an independent and autonomous ballot. Related to the idea of in-person polling places, we also need expanded uh, early voting options because if people are going to be voting in person, we don't want them all crowded on the same day. We want to be able to smooth out when people go in to vote and be able to diversify the kind of pressure that is being put on the polling locations. 
the easiest and best way to do this is by having lots of different days for long periods of time that people can vote. That way you can make sure that everybody's not cramming through the same doorway or trying to access the same voting machine. That way you're also giving poll workers a chance to wipe down voting machines in between voters and that people can take the time that they need um, in order to be able to be six or so feet away from the other person. Um, expanded early voting opportunities are a really important part to keeping people safe. And finally, the last bucket of advocacy is we need massive, massive, massive voter education. So much is changing and so much has changed. And voters are going to have a very hard time keeping up with uh, the new voting date, uh, what the new voting rules are, where their new polling place is, what day they, can, they need to apply for an absentee ballot, when they have to mail it by, you know, what do they have to do to get it to count. All of these kinds of changes are going to be very overwhelming to voters who are already facing all sorts of other changes because of the disruption in their life. Um, and the public education needs to be really robust and really good if people are going to have the information they need in order to be able to participate in an informed way. Um, this is especially true with low information voters who um, may not have access to the social media or online guides that some people get some of their information for. We need to make sure that we have public education campaigns that speak to all Americans and make sure that all of us can be participating.